G'day guys, Felix Lee here from my home in Sydney, Australia. Today I want to share a video by my fellow friends, fellow leader, Albi Costa. Um, this video is being taken by Albi, uh, as a matter of fact, when I was chatting with him through Skype last week. Um, this is the beauty of our team again, where I can reach out to my fellow members or fellow mentor and leaders, uh, where we share inspiration, goals, you know, become a running partners in this business journey and this beauty of, you know, this beauty of having a family um, in this business. And Albie's story, okay, when, when Albie was doing this video, he actually drove to a few, you know, a few places to actually show, this, the, to simplify this parable so anyone, anyone watch this can truly get you know the story or the moral of the story behind this video and obviously this is a story of a of two farmers as what it says on the title of the video and I hope by the end of this video you can choose clearly which farmers that you want to be so enjoy guys well hi there uh, my name's Albie Costa and uh, if I haven't met you then uh, hello and as you can probably tell by the weird accent uh, I live here in Australia um, I'm just in my backyard here having a, a little bit of a wander around and I was just thinking about a, a little story um, that sort of uh, came into my head while I was uh, wandering around and it's the story of the two farmers and uh, I'd just like to share this story with you because I think there might be some valuable lessons in there for you and as I've been uh, sort of building this story up in my head I've, I've actually learnt quite a bit myself. So the story goes like this, there's a, a, a father and uh, he's getting on in age and uh, he owns some considerable land and uh, he's split the land into two properties, two distinct properties. And he has two sons and uh, you know he loves his sons dearly as fathers do or should do and he leaves uh, half of the property to each of his son, son number one and son number two. Now it's beautiful land, it's fertile country it's got good soil it's got um, you know good water a river running out the back and uh, he says to his sons you know I'm going to give you this land and I I want you to do the best you can do with that land and and provide for your family and provide for your future same land given to both same soil same opportunity um, same river running out the back same water same everything and what happened is son number one sort of walked up to the block, the paddock, the land, and he sort of looked at the soil and ran it through his hands and uh, he didn't really know a whole lot about farming. And uh, he started to think to himself, you know, well, this could be pretty risky, this farming thing. You know, we could we could get floods, um, we could get drought. Um, you know, if I was to pour money into this thing, uh, you know, I could lose it all. Um, you know, it's, it's really, really looking, you know, quite risky. You know what? I'm actually not going to put any money into that land I'm not going to buy any seed till it actually produces a crop and actually starts making me money that way I'm in a risk-free situation so he walked off and uh, he left the, the paddock to its own devices and then he went home and it was sort of you know autumn moving into winter getting a little bit chilly and uh, he sat down in front of the fireplace in his home and he looked at that fireplace and because he was very risk averse uh, he said to the fireplace, you know what, uh, I'm actually not going to risk, um, you know, chopping any wood at this point because I really, you know, can't guarantee the outcome. I'll tell you what, once you start producing some heat, uh, then I'll chop up some wood and I'll actually start putting it into the fireplace. And he sat back and he waited for his crops to grow and he waited for his fire uh, to produce some warmth and he waited and he waited. Son number two, he walked up to uh, a block of land, the paddock and the beautiful piece of fertile ground that his father had left him and he looked at that land and again he picked the dirt up and he let it run through his fingers and, and also he said to himself, you know, I don't know a real lot about this farming thing but you know what, I'm going to actually find a little bit about it. So he, uh, he spoke to some farmers, got some advice, he got some books on farming, read about farming and he, he, he did notice that uh, if you knew what you were doing that you could actually make some great money out of this farming deal. So he didn't have a whole lot of money. He went and borrowed some money off some, some friends, family, the bank, 
and uh, he went and bought some beautiful seed and he started to plant that seed into the soil and he spent a whole season sowing the seed and he, he, he tended to that seed and he pulled water on there and uh, you know and he waited because when he looked at that paddock all he could see after that season of work was just a, a whole lot of tilled soil uh, there was no crop there was a whole lot of work that had been poured into that um, he actually got a little bit of despondent at some points towards the end of the season because he didn't see any results but he was told that if he did X amount of work um, he would reap X amount of crop and sure enough it came the end of the season and a beautiful lush crop grew and uh, he got so excited and he he harvested that crop and after he harvested that crop he invested some of the money into buying more seeds um, for the next season he also uh, when the next season came around used some of that money so somebody else could do the hard work of planting the seeds and uh, he went home and uh, he was a happy man he, he chopped some wood up he built himself a beautiful fire so not only did he have the satisfaction of working hard um, and investing into that land he also you know was warm and uh, you know he, he lived a pretty comfortable lifestyle now um, fast forward a few years and uh, the the difference between the two brothers uh, could not be more more stark brother number one what I'd like to do is actually take you to where brother number one lives right now let me just jump in my car and I'll take you up the road and I'll show you where his mindset and his attitude has got him. And what I want to do now is I'm going to show you where um, son number one, farmer number one, uh, where he lives now. now he um, has uh, become a very bitter, twisted man. He uh, has developed what I call a, um, a victim mentality. And, uh, you know, he has grown up over the last few years to believe that uh, the world owes him a living. And he's very, very angry at society that society hasn't looked after him. And uh, this is where he lives now. Just want you to have a good look at that. Can you see the... Um, the point I'm trying to get to here just because of a simple simple change of mindset it can affect so greatly the outcome of your life you know if you're one degree out in your mindset here a few years down the track you're going to be 80 90 degrees out you'll end up going in a completely different direction and it's it's unbelievable the difference that it can make to your life just by a simple change of mindset and working on your mindset. What I'd like to do now is I want to take you to where the, what I call the prudent son, uh, where he's now, the prudent farmer, and what his life's like, and the decisions that he made way back early in the piece, where those decisions have actually taken him, and, and, and the sort of lifestyle that he's living now. So let me just jump in the car again, and I'll take you off to where son number two is living now.
So can you see the difference between the two mindsets? I think this parable should probably be called the parable of the two mindsets. One of the sons, son number one, had the mentality of, you know what, it's too risky. Um, you know, there's no guaranteed outcome. I'm going to have to put money into this thing. I don't know what the result is. That decision, that lack mentality, or what I call even a, ends up becoming a victim mentality in the end, um, gives you a certain result. Okay? If you are where you are today because of the decisions you made yesterday. You move in the direction of your dominant thought. If your dominant thought is getting away from risk and not in investing in your business, not planting the seeds, then that's going to be the result. There is no shortcut. There is no other route to success except sowing into your business, sowing into yourself, investing in yourself, gaining the knowledge, gaining the mindset that you need to actually achieve success, to start to think like a successful person. You need to invest. And, you know, risk comes as part of the territory. And risk is the currency of successful people. Risk is the currency of millionaires, it's been said. And look at that successful son. Look what he did. He saw opportunity. He invested in knowledge. He sowed seeds. He actually, uh, there's an old saying, that action precedes belief. He put in the action before he actually saw the result. But he knew where he was going. He had a very clear in his head. He had a vision and he was prepared to pour himself into his business. And now he reaps the benefits and his family will reap the benefits. So you can see that they both had the same opportunity. But the way they both chose to think about that opportunity led them to a certain result down the track. And it's the same with all of us. You know, the decisions that we make today are going to lead us to a certain result down the track. Now, it's never too late to change your mindset. Um, you can start doing that as of right now. In fact, I really encourage you to start right now. But that decision to change your mindset will affect so greatly how you're going to live in the future. And if you were to project that forward a generation or two, can you imagine the difference that you could leave behind you just by changing your mindset now? The ripple effect that that would happen for the generations to come. The ability that you have now to create a dynasty, to create a legacy that you leave behind just by changing the way that you think. So guys, I hope you've, um, you've got a few gold nuggets out of this little video. I've certainly learned a lot um, by going through the process of making this video and I really encourage you guys just to think like a successful like that successful farmer um, and to really invest in what happens between the ears here and, uh, and get some blinkers on shut out the stuff that doesn't count shut out the stuff in this world that's competing for that positive mind space Shut out the stuff that is not going to get you the result that you want. Okay? So anyway, I think that's enough. Um, I didn't want to make this too long. But get out there. Give it your best shot. Change your mindset. And I know I wish you all the success because the thing I love about this business, as I always say, is you know our success is built on your success. And the only way we can become successful is to help you guys. So I hope this has helped you on a certain part of your journey. All right, guys, take care. See you online. I uh, hope to meet you in person soon. Bye-bye.